everybody, this is Jordan Machado, aspiring biologist and hopefully a future herpetologist. And th today's video, we actually got sponsored by Inkbird to review their temperature hygrometer sensor. It actually says temperature humidity. And it's the IBS TH3 plus Wi-Fi. And we're going to go over why handy little tools like this can actually help you when it comes to humidity. So sometimes people will actually ask us if humidity can be an issue. Now, one of the reasons I actually love hog noses is that usually you don't have to worry too much about the humidity because they are native to the US. So most of the places here in the US, the ambient humidity is pretty spot on. However, depending on where you live, like I live in Vegas, so it's really, really dry here. Or if you even live in places where it rains a lot, like some parts of California, Oregon, and Washington, you might have to kind of deal with too high of a humidity. So we're gonna be talking about different ways that you can either increase or lower your humidity, things that are often associated with low or high humidity, and also why that's so important for not just hog noses, but for a bunch of different species. Now, the reason that we were actually really excited about Inkbird sponsoring us and letting us have one of these, which by the way, we're gonna have a giveaway. So whoop, whoop, feel free to like, comment, and share so that you can be a part of our giveaway. And we'll be giving away one of these for free. We'll show you how to set it up and everything. We're gonna be using it ourselves. Uh, this is very helpful because if for hawk noses specifically, if your humidity is too low, sometimes they can actually lose their appetite on top of possibly becoming dehydrated. And you'll see this sometimes with babies because baby snakes are still kind of learning about the world and hog noses are not the most instinctual. So occasionally they don't really realize they have to drink water. So making sure that there's a proper humidity gradient either by having a humidity box or actually just using a handy tool to track the humidity will help make sure that that hog nose doesn't get dehydrated from low humidity. Generally with hog noses, you'll kind of want to shoot for, I would say between like 40% humidity to about 60% humidity. If for some reason the hog nose is dehydrated, usually you'll notice that when they're kind of like the ridge of their back gets a little wrinkly, almost like a little spine. They look like little spinosauruses. Not good to look like that though. That generally is kind of one of the first signs of dehydration. Other signs can also include their eyes looking a little crackly or crispy. And you can also notice these signs in other snakes as well. So that'll generally be a little bit of like elastic -y body tissue. Essentially, usually the snake body is supposed to be nice and taut, but if they're dehydrated and let's say you like just gently tug on their skin a little bit, it's going to kind of stay in that position and take a while. You also see this with other animals like human beings. If you're dehydrated, your skin will also take a little bit to go back into place. But other than that, those are some easy kind of signs for you to tell if your hog nose is dehydrated. Another way is to just dump their head in a water bowl. And of course, make sure it's treated with Safe. But if you dump your hog nose's head in a water bowl and it's there drinking for minutes and minutes on end, generally, you might wanna take a look at your humidity because it might be too low. Humidity is actually with the type of enclosure that you keep your hog nose in. And this does apply to all snakes. So essentially, higher humidity is gonna be a lot easier to maintain in tubs. So plastic enclosures, and that just naturally kind of keeps the condensation and the water vapor inside, which will help maintain the humidity. So that's great if you live in a really dry area, or if you just kind of need to be a little more space efficient. But let's say you have the opposite problem. In that case, enclosures like these guys, the glass ones, the aquariums, are going to be perfect for you because this open lid right here will actually allow the water vapor to escape, which will kind of help you keep a much lower humidity. It's also why with other snakes that need high humidity, they recommend that you cover this with like tin foil if you need the higher humidities, because that's gonna kind of prevent the water vapor from escaping. Whereas let's say you specifically want to use a tub. Now in that case, let's say the humidity is too high. Chances are that's gonna be the problem you're going to run into. You might want to see if you can use a slightly smaller water dish, a different type of substrate, or you can increase ventilation, but with a few different methods. My favorite one is just adding ventilation holes. So on top of having ventilation holes on the side of the enclosure, you can also add ventilation holes on the top of the enclosure, which will kind of help the humidity and the water vapor just escape. And that way you can control it a little more easier. So that's how you kind of increase natural humidity in the glass enclosures and the tub enclosures. 
Okay, so this is just kind of fresh out of the box. I haven't actually opened this yet, so got to cut the little tapes over here on the bottom. Let's pull this up. There we go. Oh, all right. It has an instruction manual. Oh, that's nice. Okay, scan to download the manual. We've got a handy little QR code right here. And let's take a look at the humidity hygrometer sensor. And funny enough, I actually have a few Inkbird products already. It is one of the not specific to reptile brands that have really good products that work for a lot of reptile things. So I felt super honored that they actually reached out to have us take a look. Okay, cool, it seems to come with the battery. Power switch is here. Let's go ahead and pull that tab out. All right, do I actually need to turn it on? Looks like I do. Okay, let's go ahead and open that. Okay, yeah, cool, on and off button. Let's turn you on. Oh, nice, it even has a little stand. If you wanna make it look nice and cute inside your enclosure for an easy glance, just bonk. Look at that, adorable. So I'm gonna guess that once we download the app, we'll actually be able to set this up a little easier. Okay, so this is everything that comes in the box. We've got our thermometer hygrometer over here. Um, we have the little instruction manual, has a little charger, USB-C port, and we have a cute little box. So let's go over the, how to get the instruction manual. You're just gonna take this, flip it over. We've got a QR code right on the back. You can just go ahead and scan that. And it should be the first link that pulls up. It'll actually say um, IBSTH3 plus Wi-Fi English manual, but they do also have other languages in case English is not your primary language. So yay for accessibility. In the top left, we're generally gonna be getting our temperature comfort icons. So there are three different icons that this particular um, IBS TH3 plus Wi-Fi thermometer hygrometer is able to read. And the little sun means it's hot. Generally, that's gonna mean it's really hot. Temperatures might not be super comfortable. Now we also have a smiley face. Now again, this one is the top left. You got a smiley face there, then that means that, you know what, the temperature's feeling nice and comfy. And of course, if you get a little snowflake, just like that one, that means it's feeling kinda chilly. Okay, so then in the bottom left, we're gonna be covering our humidity comfort levels. If you got squiggly little lines, it's like a dry road that you can't see anything. So it's really, really dry. If you got a little smiley face, that means you are nice and comfy, you're not melting or begging for water. And if you got a bunch of little raindrops, you guessed it, it's pretty wet, it's pretty humid. So it's pretty good, easy to read. You want smiley faces. So I think right now my favorite thing about this, just right off the bat, is that I can program the comfort levels, which means I can actually put inside the Wi-Fi app that I want it to be comfortable between 40% and 60%, which is kind of what I'm usually gonna be aiming for with my hog noses. Which is awesome because now at a glance, if I don't see a smiley face, I know that I need to go and adjust the humidity levels. But based on our little icons that we just covered, it's a lot easier and quicker for you to just know at a glance what you need to fix. And the same thing even goes for the temperature. Sometimes maybe the power went out and you didn't realize that your heat was out or that your heat mat isn't working anymore or even your bulb and that you needed to change it. Now the little icons are gonna change to let you know, hey, by the way, it's not hot enough or it's not cold enough for this specific area. Um, I will say I kind of wanna be greedy and just have like two of these in the same enclosure, one on each end, just so that I can set it as, hey, this is gonna be my hot side and this is gonna be my cold side. And then I can have like multiple little micro areas that will really help me make sure that I have a good heat and humidity gradient because now they can actually move around and find what they need, which is just so awesome in so many ways. Not to mention that you actually even have little awesome graphs that let you track and see what the humidity and temperature has been doing. So if you have like night cycles or if you turn the lights off and you have a basking lamp, it will actually tell you if it's possibly getting too cold at night because sometimes people want to give their hog noses a day and night cycle, but their hog noses won't eat for them when they do. Usually that's just because it's getting a little too cold at night. So this is a really great way to just avoid a lot of problems. Like if you have this and you ever have an issue with one of your hog noses, it is significantly easier to just 
troubleshoot what might be going on because then you can really know okay the humidity is good you can check there's no temperature drops there's no humidity changes and that's probably gonna be my favorite thing about this okay so right now we are pairing which involves um going into the app we got a nice little video and then once you do that you kind of just hold that little action button for five to eight seconds and the wi-fi is supposed to start blinking um and now we're waiting so now that we have everything downloaded the device the ibs th3 plus i wonder if we can rename it is showing up here so let's go ahead and click that let's put this for the cold side so I don't want my cold side to be colder than I would say like 75. Because if it's colder than 75, you might start running into feeding issues. So we'll put minimum temperature 75. And I don't want my cold side to be like more than 83 because at that point that's starting to become a hot side. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And then the humidity alarm, I would probably have it alert me at I'd say like 35 because a little under 40 probably won't be too bad. Um, but if it gets below 35, that's definitely an issue. And then we'll put maximum humidity. I'll put that at, I'd say 60 because if it's, I'll even put 61. If it's passing 60, you might start to have some issues. Generally, I only want that to be above 60 if I have a really dehydrated hog nose, in which case I would probably want it sitting around like, 50% to 65%, but if it's at 70, that's too much. Um, okay, and then logging interval, it says the setting data will take place when the device wakes up next time or when the action button is pressed. So I would say once per hour is pretty good to kind of monitor that, but for the intent and purposes of seeing how quick this updates, we'll actually put it to log every 10 minutes. If the interval is, if the time interval is set to this value, the battery life will be less than or equal to one month. Oh, huh, that's actually kind of cool. It basically tells you how much usage it's gonna use. That's awesome. Okay, so we also have a temperature calibration. So in this case, um, I can actually use other forms of thermometers or hygrometers to help it become more accurate. So let's say it needed a bit of a correction, which I actually don't know if I would need a correction, at least not yet, um, but you can always adjust it here. So like, for example, in the temperature calibration, let's say it's reading two degrees too high, then I'll go ahead and calibrate it to have um, two degrees lower. So essentially I want it to read two degrees lower than what it's reading accurately. So there's um, essentially a nice way to be able to correct any uh, possibility in regards to uh, different reading systems. Let's go ahead and click more settings. And okay, so we've got the device information. And yay, we can rename it. Awesome. What what should we name this? Um, I guess I'll just name it Hog Nose. Hog Nose. For us to set the relative temperatures to give us the icons, you go over here into the state tab. So again, let's say for the cold side, I'd say, let's see, comfort levels. This is for temperatures. So what's a comfortable temperature for our hog noodles? Again, if it's in the nice sweet spot of where I want it to be, I want that to be 75 is a nice comfy spot. And I'd say like 80 is a good comfy spot. Why are you 74.5? Oh, there we go. 75. And then I'd say, okay, so it wants to really go down to decimals. Okay, no exact things. Okay, so then we've got heat. So the hot side, or the cold side in this case, which is what we're setting this up for, is going to be considered too hot if it is around, I'd say if it's above 82. Okay, 81.9, and then I would say, yeah, I would definitely say it's cold if it's like below 68, but let's just put 70 here. So I guess you can kind of fine tune that so that your comfort levels and your alert levels kind of work within themselves. So like comfort level, for example, could be like, let's say for your hot side or your cold side would be like between, I'd say 77 to like 81. Like I'd say those are pretty solid comfort levels. Whereas a little bit below that and a little bit above that, I'd probably wanna keep a um, better track of how that works. And then the humidity state comfort. Okay, so over here, we're gonna put 
and for the higher humidity we're gonna put 60% um, okay and then we want to consider things damp when it is bigger than 65% or larger and dry when it is lower than 35% I think that's that's pretty fair okay cool so let's go ahead over here to synchronize the relevant parameters immediately press the device action button okay do I have to hold this um, press the device after setting the parameters otherwise it will only automatically be synchronized when it does that okay so we'll just hold this button here and oh all right yep. okay so now that it's synced you do just press it once and it'll automatically update so now it's saying hey it's too hot so I guess that does leave a lot of room for customization because you could just have the icons not even be turned on to just kind of let you know hey it's not ideal but it's not too hot and it's not too cold um, so yeah, definitely um, reading the manual helps if you're ever confused like I am or just watching this video can help as well. Um, okay, cool. So I got it to be Fahrenheit. I set it up to where I want it to be and it's actually already started tracking um, every 10 minutes. So our first log was like 38.5% and then the humidity was 428 and then we've got the temperature side 85.8 and then 86.9. Um, yeah, so as soon as I stopped holding this, it got too, uh, too dry. Um, so then it's disappeared instead of having the comfort icon, but it's not dry enough that it shows that it's not comfortable. So that's interesting. Um, okay, so the device is online. I think now we kind of set it up. We're good to go. Time to test it. All right, everybody. So we have been testing for over 24 hours now the awesome Inkbird IBS TH3 Plus Wi-Fi. And what is particularly cool and that made me very happy is uh, we actually set it up on Shelby's phone and we left the thermometer here inside one of our hognose enclosures. You can see it right here. And the reason we did that was to test if you'll still get notifications even if your phone is not at home and on the same Wi-Fi, since that was essentially one of the criteria when setting it up. They both had to be on the same one, but it does seem that after pairing, Shelby got notifications every 10 minutes, letting her know updated temperatures. As soon as the humidity did spike a little bit, she got a humidity alarm to let her know that it was at the point where we had set those parameters and I cannot express how happy I am because I have in the past tried different brand hygrometer thermometers that looked really similar to the Inkbird one, but unfortunately they wouldn't update when you were not within the same Wi-Fi, which for me was kind of a huge loss because the whole point of me having something that connects to Wi-Fi and monitors something, at least, yeah, for me, is that I can monitor it when I'm not around and not at home. And considering that we do expos and we travel a lot, like being able to track, like especially really expensive, like clutches and stuff like that is particularly refreshing. So let me actually show you guys how we got it set up. All right, so this is one of our little baby tubs. And this little guy is actually in shed right now. So it was really nice to know what the humidity is. And I do plan on kind of troubleshooting myself because it turns out that this is not wet. He did not knock over his water, which means we had a few solutions. We could either do a smaller water dish, which I don't want to do considering that it's already a decently small water dish and I want him to be able to soak if he wants to. Um, and I have it monitoring here near the front. I did also test it by moving the temperature um, set all the way to the back to see if the humidity was purely because it was right next to the water. And it does seem to be pretty spot on. Now, Given he is in shed, I'm actually okay with the humidity being around 70. And the thing is, when I do open it, it does start going back down. So basically, this was perfect. He, funny enough, didn't knock it over, but he's a chill little dude, aren't you? Oh, I know. I say that as you huff and puff. He actually just ate. Um, and honestly, I'm like really surprised. I didn't realize that the humidity here was decently high. I mean, the, thankfully, no issues, no upper respiratory infections. The Aspen is still pretty dry, but again, we do open these pretty often and that helps air out the humidity. As you can see, the humidity is already dropping down to 56%. So chances are because they're not constantly exposed to this humidity. And now I'm actually able to verify that they do really, really well. 
All right, so we're actually going to go ahead and take advantage of this opportunity to upgrade one of our little pet-only hog noses that we are raising up. So there is a difference between special needs and pet-only, so I'll just cover that really quick. Special needs means that chances are you're going to have to kind of work with them and there's something about them that requires extra care. Whereas pet-only will generally mean that they have a defect of some sort, but it's not necessarily impeding on their quality of life and they still seem to be thriving. Don't get me wrong, some pet-onlys can be become special needs but generally whenever we sell a pet only hog nose it means that for as long as we've had them for as long as we've been noticing and feeding them and taking care of them and getting to know them they have been thriving and doing great and because this particular girl is kind of special she is a dwarf now i don't mean that she's small or that she's stunted it's her body is physically different it's not just a tiny hog nose like she's very chunky and compared to the rest of her body her head is very very short when i have like seen this a few other times generally they're actually micro kinks so there are a bunch of very small kinks in their spine so in her case i actually didn't see any kinks at all which is awesome so with the cute little dwarf i'm actually going to introduce you guys to her we did name her Stub because she is a cute little tiny baby. And the thing is, we had her in this little baby setup. We actually started with her in the baby rack. And then once we made sure she was eating consistently in the baby rack, we moved her into the little baby starter setup, which I've shown you guys how to make at home. And I'm going to let her keep her cave. Also going to let her keep her little leafies because she's claimed them as her own. I already have this set up for her pretty much ready to go. And here is little baby Stub. Now she is a pistachio female, and why that is particularly interesting is because pistachio is a morph, and particularly with her, I'm interested that she's a female, which means females generally will get longer. But if you notice how chunky she is, she's just really chunkster. Okay. So we'll go ahead and set her up in her first little enclosure. It's really exciting when the babies get to this point. Generally, we try to set them up for success regardless of if they're going to stay here or if they're going to go home. But my goal is to get these guys as confident as possible so that when I do transition them or if their owners decide to transition them out of tubs, that they will thrive. And this is kind of the halfway point that we try to have most of our babies in because this is still a little similar to a tub system, but it's got a little more height, a little more open space that can make it easier to transition them into a glass enclosure. Now, whether or not you decide to use a rack system or a tub or even a glass aquarium enclosure, it's completely up to you. There are pros and cons to all of them. We personally use both here at Snakeful Grace. We run everything from home. We alternate. Snakes have time where they get their enrichment and they get to kind of hang out and explore and get exercise. And then we have breeding season where they'll usually be in racks. And I have noticed that it is significantly easier to raise the babies and help them build that confidence while in baby tubs and then gradually working them up into something closer to what someone would want to put on them. But... Look at how cute this so little chunky. baby is. Okay, here you go, mama. Here you go. I'm gonna let her do her little exploring. I'm gonna get her little cave. I'm gonna put that over here. Now I'm gonna have this be my hot side, and then this is gonna be my cold side where the water is. I'm gonna give her her little leaves that she's already used to. So you want to kind of, essentially you don't even want to see the aspen. You just wanna put as much stuff in there as possible. I'll even put the little lavender leaf right there, kind of give her a little more stuff to hide in. There you go, mama. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the magnet works with this. And as I usually recommend, I think that tracking the humidity on the cold side is ideal since this is kind of meant to be my humid side and this is meant to be my drier side. So we're gonna have the heat on this side and we're gonna be monitoring humidity on this side. And I'll even turn this so that you guys can see. I'm going to go ahead and just set this right here. Right in the middle. And plop. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I didn't mean to spook you. So now if I wanted to track the humidity at a glance, I totally could. But I think I'll even take it a step further and actually put it here on the back. Okay, so that's it. And now I know that this little humidity is tracking this enclosure. And then if I need to increase the humidity, I could just put some tin foil, tape that up here. If I needed to decrease the humidity, then I would probably try to find a slightly smaller water bowl. But yeah, there we go, guys. Um, I'm personally 
really, really excited about this. And I will be providing a link for you guys as well if you did want to try it out yourself. I'm personally really excited and we are also doing a giveaway for the Inkbird IBS TH3 Plus, the Wi-Fi. Uh, so be sure to comment, like, subscribe. We will be giving it away in two weeks. So I will randomly pick from one of the comments and I will be in touch. So woo, exciting! I hope this helps you guys as much as it helps me. I'm looking forward in putting these in all of my sensitive snakes and species. I might even get one for the uh, morning geckos. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for tuning in guys and hey, keep it snakeful. Just like it felt when we went to Daytona. Ha, I walked outside and my forehead was very condensed. I didn't realize that it was not sweat for a good few seconds until I licked it, then it was salty. No, or it wasn't salty. I licked my, my hand, I was just like, ugh, too hot. Licked it because I'm curious. I was just like, wow, how did I already start sweating? And then, look at how cute, look at the chunky little belly and the chunky little tail and the chunky little body and the little tiny face. I don't know. The water droplets are too real. It's so true. <laughs>